In this video tutorial, we're going to discuss integration of Fluid Interactive's rendering program, Ambient Occlusion, into SketchFX effects. In addition to being able to use SketchFX to apply effects to models, you can also use it to apply effects to renderings created by Ambient Occlusion. For this to work, you must have Ambient Occlusion installed on your computer. You can get more information about Ambient Occlusion by following the link in the notes below. Let's take a look at one of the built-in ambient occlusion presets in SketchFX. Start by clicking the Apply Effect button in the SketchFX toolbar. Click the drop-down for Change Preset and scroll down and select Pencil 1 AO. As you can see, if Auto Update is selected, this will apply the Pencil 1 AO effect to your model. If Auto Update is not selected, you'll have to click the Update button in the toolbar above. It's worth noting that if you have a slower computer, you may want to consider unchecking the auto update box so that your PC is not trying to update your image every time you make a change. The ambient inclusion options are more processor intensive than the other options because they are generating a rendering in addition to all of the styles in your model. Let's run through the various effects being applied to this model and review what they're doing to create this effect. Note that SketchFX applies effects in a top-down order meaning that effects at the top of the list in the effects list get applied first to your model. This means that whatever effect is at the bottom of your list is being applied last, meaning that it's at the top of the image created. In SketchFX, you can turn the various effects off and on in the effects list by clicking the eye icon next to each effect in the list. Let's turn off all the effects and run through them one by one. First, let's turn on the Ambient Occlusion effect. As you can see, when you turn this effect on, SketchFX renders your model with Ambient Occlusion. You can adjust the various settings for Ambient Occlusion rendering by clicking on the effect name. For example, you can set the quality of the render by using the Quality drop-down, and you can select if the rendering is black and white or colored using SketchUp Materials in the Render Mode drop-down. Try playing around with these settings to achieve different effects. All the settings you can adjust in Ambient Occlusion are contained in this section. You probably should turn off the other effects in your effects list before playing around with these settings so that your model renders more quickly. It's worth noting that Ambient Occlusion also includes support for section cuts, so you can use this to render and stylize sections as well. Now, let's run through our other settings. Sky is adding a new sky background image in the background. Note that the options for Use Depth as Mask and Invert Mask are checked, allowing this sky image to be added as a mask in the background wherever your model does not appear. This effect has two child effects. Child effects are effects that only change the effects they're a child of. You can tell their child effects because they have an extra indent in the effects list. In this case, you can see that these two child effects are only affecting the sky image. Hue Saturation Value is adjusting the color of the sky image so that it matches the gray of the pencil drawing. Brightness Contrast is adjusting the contrast of the sky image so that even though the color has been removed, the image itself is more visible. Blurred Hidden Lines is a SketchUp style that's being applied to this model. As you can see, the ambient occlusion rendering does not generate lines in the model, so this layer is bringing those back into the generated image. Note that the option for Multiply has been selected in the Blend Mode settings. Otherwise, SketchFX will overlay this new style on top of your model and hide all the layers beneath it. Multiply allows you to blend new effects so that all your effects remain visible. Blur is a child effect to your hidden lines. As you can see, this effect is applying a blurred effect to your hidden lines layer, giving all the areas where hidden lines are contained a hand-drawn look. Graphite and Graphite Overlay are both applying the Graphite Overlay default image included with SketchFX to this model. Play around with the blend mode in the image options to adjust the look of your final result. For example, if you adjust the Graphite Blend Mode option to Multiply and leave the Graphite Overlay Image Blend Mode as Overlay, you'll achieve a different result. 
You can adjust the opacity of these graphite overlay images to adjust how strong the graphite effect is in your model. Hidden lines and blur are darkening the lines in your model after the graphite overlay images are added. Hidden Lines Extensions X-Ray is applying the hidden line style to your model with X-Ray mode turned on, allowing some of the backside lines from your model to show through. You can adjust the strength of this effect by changing the opacity value in the effect settings. The last setting is a color overlay with the child radial mask value. What this is doing is applying a white color around the border of your image. The color overlay simply overlays a white color over your model, but the radial mask child value is masking the image so that the white color is only applied around the border. If you turn off the radial mask option, you can see how the white color hides your entire model. The radial mask option applies your white color in a circle around your screen. You can adjust the size of this circle in your radial mask properties. That's where we're going to end this tutorial. For more SketchFX tutorials, make sure to check out the links in the notes below. If you're looking for more assistance with SketchFX, check out the SketchFX forums at the link in the notes below. Thank you for watching this SketchFX tutorial.